That's a good question. Actually, Amundi at its creation put ESG as one of the four pillars. Our CEO said ESG must be part of our DNA. So we didn't discover ESG yesterday. It has been really part of the uh, journey of the firm that is leading us being one of the uh, world leaders and clearly the European leader in asset management. So now the question is why, really? Why? Because we think that we must provide returns to our clients. That's our job. And by focusing on ESG factors that will generate returns over the long run, we are doing our job. So we include governance, climate, social elements in our investment chain. Um, so we started more than 10 years ago. We have developed as well many products. Uh, we closed a deal with IFC, we developed the first low carbon indexes, we partnered with EDF in order to finance some green infrastructure projects, we partner with CA Renewable Energy. So on all asset classes, we try to be innovative in order to be as efficient as we can in integrating ESG factors. But we don't want to stop there. We announced last September that we were um, shifting to the next level. And so we want to have 100% of our assets, right now $1.7 trillion, having an ESG filter by 2021. So we started before the others. We have been innovative asset class per asset class. And now we want to mainstream ESG in all our asset classes. We are very ambitious. We want to tackle a big, big problem. On the one hand, we have massive pools of assets in developed markets, and they're facing a low yield environment. On the other hand, we have massive needs of green infrastructures financing. And there is no bridge between the two worlds. And it's costly for both parties, because for the developed markets, they don't have access to the returns of the developing markets. And for the developing markets, they don't have access to the capital flows of the developed markets. Lose-lose situation. And it has been around for a while. Many papers, many studies, and so on and so on. And with IFC, we bring a solution. We analyzed why we didn't have the right allocation of capital. And basically, there are two main reasons. The first one is that for many investors, it's too risky to invest into emerging market debt. All guidelines, whatever, that's the reality. The second reality is that for many investors, it's very complicated to invest into infrastructures, even locally. If you ask Swedish investors, French investors, Australian investors, what do you do in your own countries? Nothing. So if they do nothing in their own countries, it doesn't make any sense to suggest that they could invest into infrastructures in Mexico, in Turkey, or in China. And here we come. We have created a fund that is right now deploying more than $2 billion. We take the money from the developed markets and we transfer it to the developing market. Second point, we use green bonds. We use green bonds in a way that, uh, because we, we buy green bonds issued by financial banks or financial institutions, banks, in emerging markets. It means that we, the investors, will buy the balance sheets of the banks. But the banks, by issuing the green bonds, will actually channel the money towards infrastructures. So we are decoupling the risks that we are taking from the channeling of the money. And suddenly, we have the bridge. The, the, the biggest fund on green bonds so far was $345 million. And right now, we are deploying $2 billion. And what is really cruel, if I may say, is that um, it's even more than a deal. Now, that transaction is becoming a kind of case study for developing banks. Developing banks have, for decades, financed infrastructure projects on their own balance sheets. And suddenly, they are using their skills, their resources, to unlock the capital flows from investors that are doing the jobs that otherwise they would have done. So really, it's a deal, it's a success, and it's even a larger story because it says something about the new business model of developing banks. Uh, 
uh, we are very glad to have received this award. Uh, why? Because it's um, the recognition by the industry of uh, this innovation. And, um, and the fact that in a very short period of time, uh, because we were appointed in April uh, 17, and we closed the fund in March 19. So in less than nine, 11 months, we have shifted from a two-page concept note towards closing a deal. In 11 months, we were able to finalize the st uh, structure, to write the documentation, to do the fundraising, and to make this success very public. So we are very glad that the industry is recognizing that success. Our clients are very happy because the returns are higher than expected. We are shifting towards green bonds faster than expected. And the industry says, well done guys, because you have created this innovative partnership between IFC and the private sector. So it's a PPP capital market. And um, so when you do things well, and then you have the recognition of the industry, well, you you can be uh, vaguely satisfied.